Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this video is on David Demers. How's it going? This is 31-year-old David Demers. You can sit down if you want. Oh, thanks. Demers teaches video technology at a trade college in Orlando. Using the screen name Auto Video, he chats online with a decoy named Annie, who tells him she's 14. And right from the start, Demers seems to know he's asking for trouble. Well, having any type of romantic relationship with someone younger than 18 is walking on thin ice. He sends her pictures of his and wants to know how he compares to her old boyfriend. Did it look bigger than Stevens? Yeah. Do you want it inside you? Yeah. I'm not going to deny it. I mean, obviously I'm here and whatever, so... I mean, is that appropriate to send to a girl who says she's 14? No, no. I'm not allowed. I, I knew it was wrong. On the ground! Get on, on the ground! ground now. You know, I was going back and forth between doing this video. There's really not a lot for me to do here when it comes to an investigation because he's not hiding himself. I did put through some FOIA requests. I don't think anything's going to come back on those, but if they do, I might do a separate video on that. Uh, this video should be released Monday morning as I have it planned. I was talking with Chris the other day and he's doing this uh, podcast Sunday or it's going to be released like Monday early morning. So this video should come out right after Chris's podcast. Uh, so I have to say when I was doing the Demers investigation here, I I don't want to say I felt bad because these individuals, they're all predators. They all went out to the house to try to hook up with an underage girl or boy in some cases. In this case, girl, I think she was 14. And, uh, you know, they're all scumbags to a point, some more than others. But I was doing the investigation and I was looking over a few things. I saw the sting. I saw the police interview. In the interview, he admitted to everything off the bat. There wasn't any, like... Well, it was kind of her fault too, and I think, what, who said that, Dustin? It's all wrong in my part, but she led me on a little too, and I understand both ways. Good people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides. But no, he admitted to everything. He took his licks. I mean, he knew what he did, and he didn't try to play games. And now he seems to be a productive member of society, and I don't really have anything that shows otherwise at this point. So I was thinking, how much of a monster is he? Then I got to his chat logs, and his chat logs actually span for a period of about a month, pretty steadily too. There wasn't like any large gaps. There's just a lot of talking. If you head on over to Perverted Justice and check out the chat logs there, you'll see what I'm talking about. But November 11th, 2006 to December 9th, 2006, and I'll put excerpts on screen as I'm reading some of this off. I have realized I can't say everything that's in these chat logs, because I get partial demonetization on these videos and not all of them, but on maybe like a third of them. So, you know, I have to kind of do the old Chris Hansen thing with the blanks. Can I tease and please your blank with my tongue and make you blank over and over? Okay, so on November 11th, 2006, he says, you're 14. She says, yeah, why? He says, cause you're cute, but I shouldn't be thinking that cause I could be your dad. So it's good he missed that right off the bat. Another excerpt, this is on the 17th of November, 2006. She says, ah, and he says, I think you're super cool. She gives kissy faces and he says, now, now, I want to kiss you back, but I can't, it's illegal. And you know, he just, he keeps grooming her. He keeps pushing the letter out a little more and a little more, seeing what he can get away with, seeing, testing the waters a little bit, seeing if uh, she's comfortable and he just keeps going further and further. He says, well, having any type of romantic relationship with someone younger than 18 is walking on thin ice. No, David, it's, it's not walking on thin ice. It is literally drilling a hole into the ice and jumping through it. It's not walking on thin ice. He says, having sexual relations with someone less than 18 is called statutory rape. Again, he acknowledges all this. This isn't one of those instances where he had bad eyesight and inverts the numbers on the age. It's not something where he got drunk or his friend used his computer or whatever. He's well aware throughout this entire conversation of her age and that it's illegal. Same day on the 17th, he says, you can climb me. She says, LOL, you got a ladder. And he says, I have a few places you can hold on to. So I think I'll just leave the chat at that, but you get the picture. It gets worse and worse. He keeps pushing that letter out a little further. Within a few days, he's talking about things that I don't even want to say in this video. It gets pretty graphic. So I'll put his offender registry page on screen right here. 
I'm going to knock out a few pieces of information, but it's all public record. So I ran a TPS search on him. Uh, it shows his age, his date of birth, which matches the sex offender registry. It shows his address in Manchester, New Hampshire. The TPS shows his cell phone number. And I actually ran a spy dialer on that. And if you're not familiar with spy dialer, it's a really nifty tool. It has a few ads on it, but you basically put in the number, you do a search, and then you do listen to voicemail recording. And whatever they have on their voicemail recording, sometimes it's generic, you know, like you've reached and it gives the number, but other times it has the person's voice on it. Sometimes it has their name on it. You can hear it and it doesn't even dial the phone. It just goes straight to the voicemail. So I plugged in his phone number and this is what was on the voicemail recording. You've reached David Demers, secretary treasurer of and owner of So this is the order of modification of sex offender probation. So he got eight years and there's also GPS monitoring. He was able to get that waived as a condition of the supervision. Now, like Florida is sometimes famous for, or rather infamous for, uh, I'd say about 50% of the cases I pull, and it shouldn't even be anywhere near 50%, but probably about half the cases I pull, there is a social security that is not redacted. They might redact it in one or two places, but then it'll be not redacted in another place and you have the social in all its glory right on their public record documents. So obviously I'm not going to put that in this video, but on this Interstate Commission for Adult Supervision Form Compact Action Request, you have the offender's name, date of birth, FBI number, race, sex, some other information, and you have the social security number right there completely unredacted. All right, so the last thing I'll throw on screen here, and again, I'll keep out some of the information. I mean, you can look this up yourself easy enough, but just for the purposes of this video, it says David Demers, experienced audio, video, and lighting engineer with a demonstrated and accomplished history of working in the event production industry for more than 20 years. It says that he's skilled in customer service, stage lighting, production management, sound design, having long grooming discussions with an underage girl. Oh, no, it doesn't say that here. Uh, mixing and live events, strong operations, professional with an associate of arts and sciences, focused on live show production and touring technologies from Full Sail University. It shows his current experience, and I won't put that in the video, but it's a stagehands type of local union. It shows secretary treasurer, January 2017 to present, acting business representative, October 2022, February 2021. There is a previous union, and that's Rigging Grip and Rigging Electrics. Oh, it's actually not previous. It says June 2013 to present. Now, this is interesting because he did the stagehand work for, or the electrical or lighting or whatever he does, but he did that for a number of popular movies and maybe some not so popular. But The Equalizer, I Feel Pretty, Castle Rock, Seasons 1 and 2, The Society, and there's some others that just go down the list. I don't recognize all these other ones, but I mean, Castle Rock and The Equalizer, I recognize. And then his experience just goes on throughout the years. But either way, I mean, it looks like he is not getting in trouble now. Like I said, if anything comes back on the FOIA request, I'll definitely let you know. But for the most part, it looks like he is a contributing member of society. And I haven't found any arrests or anything like that. So with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of the day. And just remember to verify everything.